This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. going on freaks yeah <clears throat> and if you're out there scouting dude thank you for the uh, gift that you sent me in the mail appreciate it very kind of you very uh, generous uh, let's see Oh yeah, so when, when you do a live stream and you end the stream using OBS, the stream stays open, which is a cool feature by YouTube because let, let's say you're, you're in the middle of the stream and some, something bad, you know, like uh, power goes out or your computer crashes, you can turn it back on again and just rejoin the same stream. But it's also weird because it goes on for hours and hours. I mean, I think there should be a cutoff of like an hour, like you know, or something where if they haven't rejoined the stream, you shut it off. But apparently it didn't do that today. It was still on when I got home. Six hours later, it's still running. Pretty crazy. But, you, I mean, I've, I've, I've kind of explained that a few different times. <coughs> and then, what was the other thing? I went to the... Uh, the body shop to, for the bumper that I screwed up the other day and he said I go what what's just gonna be an estimate you know like what, what does it generally cost for the bumper and I have a thousand dollar deductible and he goes well twelve hundred <laughs> well then it's like okay well. so he said but it was weird because there was this dent in the bumper like it, it went way in and I was trying to get it out and I couldn't do it so it looked kind of crappy and then when I got to the place today the bumper was totally fine. It, it, it fixed itself, I guess. Plastic tries to get back to where it was originally molded or something. So then it it uh, it looked normal, but you know there's some scratches on it. And then what was the other thing? And then while I was standing there, this guy comes out and goes, "Hey, look at this! They had the exact bumper for a 2017." I mean, this is a small shop, by the way. They had a 2017 Subaru uh, Forester, same color and everything. The entire bumper system was sitting there. And they were like, I, then he gave me an estimate on that, and it would be 500 to fix that. But now I'm just going to order the uh, reflect uh, reflectors that go on the bumper, and then the... Uh, that's about it and see if how what that looks like because it doesn't look bad now that it popped out I'm not sure how it did it but There you go. Is, is anybody there? <whistles> anybody? Hello? Oh, yeah, I didn't do that Yeah, so I mean it was such it was such a miracle that the uh, The guy just comes out and goes hey look at this Thanks, Danielle, and, and guess what, everybody? We have the stream goal at the top of the screen and the Super Freaks. Now, I don't know if, you know, the Jody, we're trying to do the retrial penalty phase thing. We made the goal, so I guess I have to try it again tomorrow and see how it goes, but, I mean, it was uh, pretty bad for, like, 90% of the show, and then all of a sudden, boom! It just, <laughs> it was amazing. So we got to the goal on that show, and then I had to take off with about 20 minutes left to go out and film 
the, you know, I was trying to go out to the crime scene out there. All right, so, and the crime scene was for, her name's so hard to remember because it's like a mile long, but uh, her name is Bridget Leanne Ramsey Webster. And so I went out there with, uh, you know, Benjamin is his actual name that people call him. So his name is, my stepson's name is Gabrielle Benjamin, and then, you know, whatever his last name is, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say what it is. So that's what his last name is. And so the thing is, is, um, you know, Everybody, my, my wife calls him Gabby all the time, and I'm thinking, well, Gabby's sort of like a, you know, more of a girl's name, Gabby, right? I mean, there's, and, but he, but everybody always calls him Benjamin, you know, everybody else except my wife, <laughs> and I always thought, what do you mean? So now I'm going to call, his name is Benjamin, and then the other one is Genesis Benedict, you know, but he goes by Benedict, so now there's a Benedict and a Benjamin, you know? So, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty weird. I, I asked them, "Well, what do you want to go by?" And then they didn't say. So then I got used to saying one thing, and then I said, "Listen, you can just tell me. What do you want?" Thanks, Alley Cake and Cindy J. And we're at seven dollars, two point seven nine percent of the goal. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, Genesis is pretty cool. Um, that's what my wife calls him, but they call him Benedict his whole life. Everybody else did. So I'm not really sure what to do with that one. I'll ask him. See what he likes. Genesis, he's the first... Well, I don't know if he's firstborn or whatever it is. So, anyways, if you guys um, can afford to help support the channel, that'd be great. Um, you know, I try to have the goals every night so that I can achieve, you know, where I make an income. And then I also donate over 50% of the net revenue to true crime-related charities. And that's a fact. Okay, we have 10 DNA cases that we've funded. One of them um, is actually completed, and we're just waiting for the press release to go out. So there's that one, and then we do tons and tons of money to other various places like Texas EquiSearch, NICMAC, RAIN, and a whole bunch of others. So that's the only way to make it happen is if you guys support the channel on a nightly basis. Yeah. All right, anyways, let me get to the... Let's see. I got the... Her name is... Bridget Leanne Webster and so I guess I'll throw the ones where we're driving out there first so here we go well, that's not I it I am on the road <laughs> oh, now we're heading out to the crime scene location of Bridget Leanne Ramsey Webster and this is the longest an hour and 16 minutes and then that means it's well it's a little bit closer where she went missing from but not much names I've ever heard uh, they found her, I believe, on April 30th, and this one's about an hour and 16 minute drive from Portland. And I'm with one of the one of the kids right here. He's in the in the car here. What's going on? Doing good. Hello, freaks. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. He said, "Hello, freaks." Did you hear that? He said, "Doing good." <laughs> Hello, freaks. All right. Anyways, we're just heading out there right now, and uh, I'll turn it back on when we're getting a little bit closer. All right.
Thank you for all you do. Playful face, starstruck. Thank you, Professor Pug. So that was the first video there. And then... What the heck is that? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I clicked on the on the wrong folder. That was one of my music files. There it is. Looks like we've got another 30 minutes to go here to get to the spot. Every time I start the video, if I start talking too soon, it, it doesn't kick in yet. Uh, this is sort of like rural Oregon here where you just kind of all kinds of roads Go heading out of town with uh, less and less houses as you go. <laughs> Just like but every town in America. Towns. Uh, there's a town called McMinnville we're about to get to, and then I think it's another probably 15 miles after that. So, uh, now Gabby here is getting to see this. Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> stuff for the first time it's pretty cool looking actually like isn't that neat up there yeah. yes. there's like these vineyards and yeah, so where he's from it was this this really dense city of people so now it's uh you know it's like wow look how open all this is places off to the side you guys can't really see it but yeah so we're just heading out i mean it's, what's interesting taking this drive though is realizing that you know likely the killer is taking this road or some other roads like it all the way from Portland which is an hour and some odd minutes because her body you, Chris was dumped out in this location it wasn't like she was killed there but she's from southeast Portland area so we're just heading out there and I'll turn it back on a little bit later all right see you later see you later freaks <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right moving on to the next one out of McMinnville here looks like I'm supposed to take a left pretty soon like maybe even at that next I don't light. think he was that interested in it. I think this is where one of the cases we did a few years back was uh, I think like Mar Carissa Fretwell maybe yeah I think that's the one yeah that's the lady who had a child with a married man and uh, she was gonna keep the child secret and he wasn't gonna have to pay any child support she was gonna take care of it but then she fell on hard times and the state forced her to get child support from the father and then instead of saying because then it was actually 900 a month he was going to have to pay and instead of paying the 900 dollars a month he took her and his kid and killed them and put them in the woods so that's a case that was right out you know somewhere around generally in in this area like i think i'm pretty close to salem ish yeah that was the first case i went to the scene on Carissa Fretwell went right to the, remember the, her door with all the crime scene fingerprint on it? At this point, everything looks familiar to me. But. All right, here we go. We just passed a Chipotle. And uh, we're on some more rural roads. I'm kind of surprised I remembered Carissa yeah, Fretwell's right. name for God's sake. That's a miracle for me. So we'll turn it back on a little bit later. See ya. Got some crazy land out here. I think we already did that one. So now we're about 15 miles away. No, no, it's that's really the same pretty out here one. though. That's a different one. I just said the same thing. I'm just yeah, playing see. little parts as I go. Here, hold it up over there. Maybe show some of that. 
uh, right after we passed the mountain. Or, uh, or, uh, orchard, but... Uh, no, it's not flat, really. We're just driving where it's flat. See, there's a mountain right there. <laughs> mountain in All the right. background. <laughs> Let's see, maybe just... Uh, he did that good, he panned it slow. When people send in super chats, it helps my channel, and I send a lot of it to charities and victims. So I, I want—I don't want anybody. If you want to send money to charities specifically, uh, send the money directly to them because it's a better bang for the buck. But if you're wanting to support my channel to allow me to keep doing the shows and that I give away a lot of the income that I bring in, then that's awesome. So thank you. Yeah, it's kind of, I always think those are spooky. I think it'd be fun to get a drone and have it fly right through the bottom of that. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool looking. All right, be back in a minute. Well, I guess I go right to the spot here. How's that leave? Okay, so now let's do the uh, the drone footage. So I think this is where it is. Uh, not maybe not this spot. This is below the bridge. But isn't that weird? There's that graffiti again. It's all all over the place. Even out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is you know forty miles from town, Portland, and sort of uh, just kind of a bridge over a river. And there's not really any audio here, but little little stream there. <laughs> I mean, I was just like looking at the stream for a minute. Thanks, Linda Howell. We'll just play all the video, but uh, let me. I'll show you on the map where this, this is. Yeah, so that's that, this is the bridge we're under right here in this shot. And I, I think the, actually, I didn't realize it at the time, but I think the crime scene is maybe right here, which is right between Harmony Road and the creek that they're talking about. There's a dead end, there's a no trespassing sign right there. Wait, you could, let me see something. I wonder if you could spot a crawdad or something walking in there. Yeah, that's a good one. Usually you can see one or something. Uh, I was thinking maybe that one, that thing over there, but nope. So I went down the side of the bridge and And then I just kind of put it below it. See, I'm standing up here. I don't know if you can see me, but at the top of the screen up there. Right there. Yeah, it was so windy. It kept blowing everything around. I was getting nervous. Thanks, K Tribe. See how windy it is? Look at the wind there. It's just yeah, I had a whole bunch of warnings that said stuff like, uh, "Hey, high wind warning," and it shook the drone around. It was crazy. <laughs> it literally was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" I think I think she was found right over here, though. After I was looking around for a little bit, I think it's right here. This this is so tip. This looks just like. If this is a serial killer, it's such a similar type spot on the side uh, of a sort of a road, and then you go off to the side 
uh, to put it somewhere else. Like here's a no trespassing sign, and I think it's back over here to the left. I just kind of flew it through here because I thought it was cool looking. I don't I don't know who found her. See, it's a lot of mountains all over the place. It's not flat, like the person said in the chat. I got a little bit too close to the uh, top of this thing. <laughs> yeah. See, I think her body was over here to the right. And if we look at the article here, let's see. Uh, authorities are requesting assistance from the public for information about a suspicious death. The Polk County Sheriff's Office announced Wednesday. Yeah, this sort of reminds me of the, the Florida case we were just looking at yesterday. All these different women that are seen, you know, possible into drugs or sex working or something like that, all from a certain spot go missing. Uh, Portland Police investigate double homicide on Barber Boulevard. Road. I don't know what that one is. According to Sheriff's Office, Webster was known to frequent Portland and Oregon City. The Polk County Sheriff's Office is requesting that anyone who knew Webster or has information about her death to contact Detective Martin Watson. Yeah, it says right here, found Sunday afternoon on Harmony Road near Mill Creek. So this is Mill Creek. This is Harmony Road right here. And I think it's just right here. Doesn't that make this a uh, ton of sense? Because as you look at the map here, here's Harmony Road near Mill Creek. Well, Mill Creek starts going over like this, and it really never goes back under. I mean, Mill Creek goes way over there and around, and then I guess right there it's close, you know. So, I mean, that's one of the other spots that we were talking about. Maybe here. But the fact that that one spot had no trespassing, that's what it make, feels like to me. Thank you, Cindy Lynn. So I guess it does kind of come back around. I didn't make it all the way over to that. Thanks, Greg. Wait, hold on. Let this me look at that mine. again. Appreciate you. Harmony, harmony. Oh no! So this is Mill Creek Road. So Harmony Road only goes from here to here, and the only spot that it's right next to Harmony Road is right there. Okay, so I just altered what I just said. Um, Harmony Road starts right there. Mill Creek goes up here, and that's where it goes close to. But they didn't say she was found on Mill Creek Road. They said Harmony Road. And the only spot that's like that... Oh, what was that? That was interesting. Huh. Look at that. That, that road right here is Harmony Road also. The, the road that was the dead end, or the uh, private property... That's actually called Harmony Road, if you can believe it. Weird. They just sealed it off. It goes this way. Interesting. So I think right there. And there it is. That's the actual shot of it. That tree right here is going to be uh, this one right there. So that, that tree is this one that we're looking at right here over the path right there
And by the way, is anybody even interested in the... the, the I got to get rid of all the blue notebooks. So if you send 25 to PayPal, you get the blue notebook, the blue pen, and the stress ball that has a, it's a freak heart that says freak on it. All right. So if you want one, uh, we got, I've got to get rid of those before we ever get to the Chloe. All right. Oh, thanks, Aza. Uh, I don't see anything in there. Maybe it'll come later. It's like it's like a tripod in the air. Yeah. Okay, so there that's that one. I actually flew it into this field. I was thinking, man, wouldn't that be crazy if there was another body in that long, wispy grass, grassy field there? This one's four minutes and 37 seconds long. Thanks, Dan Keith. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a PayPal in here. Maybe it comes, maybe it'll come later. Thanks, Dan Keith. Well, because there's no there's no sound, Cindy. That's why there's no it's quiet, okay? The drone doesn't pick up audio. Just... Alright, I mean I guess I could play the uh, this music. something or maybe it should be more ominous sounding there you go oh my god oh jesus got better Thank you, Dan Keith. Man, I tell, those DJI uh, dr dr uh, drones are just amazing, man. They just stay so uh, still, even in the wind. <laughs> you get a wind warning, it still looks like it's still, you know. And this is one of a tiny, this is the Mavic Mini, too. So... This is called Final Battle by Kevin McLeod. Yeah, well, I, I don't have sound on it, is what I'm telling you. Yeah, there's like uh, DJI has drones, 
they make drones, they make good ones, and they make Mavic Mini, and they have a Mavic, and then they have a whole bunch of different fleets, different types um, that they have. And a lot of them, they're all really good. I mean, every single drone they make is a good one. That's probably just a, uh, like a swamp at times, maybe. I'm just trying to, this, the little one's a little bit more, like you just move something and it jerks around, where the Mavic 2 Pro that I have, is, it's much bigger, weighs way more, but it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, smooth, I guess you could call it. I have a GoPro on my forehead too. Come on, you guys! We got to get the uh, the stream goal going though. Let's see. And this is good footage, you guys. This is. There's one more of that, and then I go back over there because I was thinking, you know, I think it's over here. Thanks, shine. Oh, that's me catching it in my hand. You put your hand, your palm out flat, and it lands right in it. Even the big one. Okay, so I think it's right. I think she was found right down in here, like literally right around, right by these wires. That's my opinion. It just seems like a simple place. You pull over. Oh, look at it. It's no trespassing right there. Hi, hey, thanks, American lady and Eugene. Yeah, there was a weird little spot right here I was looking at. I should have put it on sport mode and shot through here, but I did. I did do, uh, do a cool little slow pan up with the thing and just zipping down here. But it would have been cooler with the uh, if I was in sport mode, just zipping around. I, you know what I'd love to do is go to a like a orchard and zoom around through the uh, the aisles of trees. You know. And this time when I went over this tree, I think I almost hit it. <laughs> like right here. I mean, look, look at that. I was, that was so lucky. That would have just probably stuck right up there. Yeah, so I think right right around in here. You know, what if she, I think she might have been right there. I don't know if this little, that might be a property thing there, but it just feels like maybe right around in here because it's sort of hidden, but um, I, I don't know. It makes a lot of sense to me, though. And then that was sort of a creepy little spot there. I don't know what that was. Some tarp and a. You know. I mean, I think this is the spot, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this is. Probably an old fence or something.
Yeah, I do. I think this is. Um, this feels like there's so there's similarities, you know. Especially three of them. I haven't done real yet. Oh, I might look under that tarp. Like, what the hell? I'm running into myself. There I am, sticking my hand out. Those are my fingers. Boom! And it lands right in them. So there you go. That was the extent of the drone stuff. I just went to the uh, crime scene. It looked like it anyways. There, I think it was... There's a private road, and that sort of seems like what this guy likes to do. A little bit more like the um, body in Washington was on private property. The one in the culverts on basically a private road that leads to, it's a dead end. And then here we are where there's this private road, and I think just off to the side there is likely where, where she was found. And when I say she, I'm talking about Bridget, Leanne, Ramsey, Webster. So we'll see all that. I recorded and didn't record a whole bunch of different things. I don't know what's been recorded. Hey, thank <laughs> I guess you. we'll Cali see. Gal three. We'll probably uh, see the driving efforts of Gabby in the car. It was a little bit of a driving experience, too. He was um, on a... Yeah, let him drive. He was pretty good. Pretty uh, in, On that same road where the and he was pretty smooth. He started turning early once, and then he didn't slow down on a really s steep uh, turn once. But it was all right. It was pretty good. I mean, he was really, you know, he seemed like he felt much, much more comfortable. Sort of a country road, driving with uh, some curves in it, and uh, he did pretty good. You know, I was, I was impressed myself. I think he was impressed with himself. What, what did you think? <laughs> yeah, it felt good. <laughs> it felt good. See? <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, this one does feel similar to the other ones. Now I've got one more to go to, and that's uh, Real. And I don't know. Maybe I'll do that in the next couple of days. Maybe even tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, we'll turn it back on a little bit later while we're driving back. All right. Well, thanks again, Cali Gal 3. Yeah. Kind of fun uh, McMinnville now. We're on Highway 18. I think it was McMinnville anyways. Might have been a while back, but uh, heading back. Another 51 minutes more to get home. But, uh, yeah, I really, I feel like three of these, or four, actually. I have to see what where Real was. But so far, the three that I've been to that seem related... I think it was Perry, um, I can't remember now, now my brain's not working for the one up in Washington, uh, Speaks. Spears, I Speaks. think. Speaks, Speaks, Speaks. Right? It was Speaks, I, I, I wasn't, it wasn't popping into my head. That was close, I got the SP. Part. Spears or Sparks, or Speaks. I think Spears. Something like that. Um, anyways, up in Washington, that, Joanna that Speaks. case, this one, and uh, Perry up in Cascade Locks all seem really similar. Like the person just drove off a side road, found a sort of a secluded spot, even maybe even off of the side road, and then like another road off of it, and then just dumped the body and then took off. I, I do. I think I think three, at least three of these, but. We'll have to see where Real is, but I, just based on her location and where she regularly hangs out, I think she very well could be one of the victims, too, of a possible serial killer. Now, it's also possible that all four of these girls just randomly were killed by some random person, a different random person, all within the same month and a half. I mean, I guess that's possible. 
just doesn't seem very likely. All right, so we'll turn it back on a little bit. Back into town here, just past the golf course that I used to play at, and uh, we'll be got another 21 an minutes. They really sent us out. That was an hour and 15 minutes both ways. In a weird roundabout way to get home. Not sure what's going on, but um, yeah. I thought it was pretty interesting. It's, it's it's interesting to see the spots yourself. It doesn't change anything. It's the same, like in Google Earth, you can still find the spots, but I think you get a different feel of sort of like what a killer might be thinking in their mind while they're driving the car and where to put a body. So, uh, that's it. We'll see you guys later. Yep, there you go. That was it. So now, just randomly, we can take a look at um, Speaks really quick. Now that we have that, we can, let's see. So this is where Joanna uh, Speaks was found. And in this barn right here in Washington. And one article said she was near the barn, one said that she was in it. So either way, right around here. So look at that, that one says private property again. I mean, I don't know, there's just something that has a similar feel. You know, when you look at the, like that, let's see, is this the road? So how far did we go on that one? I'm dead, but five were. So this is the route to Joanna Speaks. All right, zipping ding, 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 down the highways. And then, then it was off this weird road that went by these huge buildings like this. And then it's just right here. You now you get up the road and then you, you just kind of have to pull over by here and then there's this abandoned house or barn right around in this area. No, I think that was me leaving, leaving. Yeah. but the drone footage was like this. So here's, look at private property, same exact damn thing, you know, almost like the private property killer, you know. It's like, and they're right inside that barn there. Sometimes I just let the drone flying <laughs> carry me away. I'm like, oh yeah, let me just do that. What if that's a homeless tent right there? Apparently she was found in that. So that's a, another person, but these all hung out in the same place down in off of 82nd Street, which is kind of a known sort of drugs and sex workers and whatnot, right? Yeah, I can go, I can fly that. You can actually fly them a couple miles away and you just press a button and they fly right back and land right on your where you wanted it to. And wherever you take it off from it sends a sets a home point. And then you one thing that sucks though is you <laughs> you set a home point and you start walking away and start looking up at your drone and you don't hit the reset home point button. It'll want to go land back where it originally took off from. So hopefully that was a, you know, you set it up well. Yeah, so there's that one, right? Then I went to, uh, I think it's Charity Perry. She's out in, let's see, where was that? Out way out in uh, Cascade Locks. 
and here's you know we'll just speed up that route so here's that way out of town again it's almost like the east north south you know i you know what there might be and this is kind of weird because now that i've done it like you could almost say like the east north south so look at you got um yeah so joanna speaks is here and then east out here that is where Perry was found. Charity Perry. And then way down south here, which is almost like southwest ish, is where Bridget was found. That's where I went today. And then Ashley Real is found over here. That's the one I haven't gone to yet. So you have basically the where the red circles are are where the four I think are related, but there are other, the two other bodies locations that we went to were there, I think this homeless one here, just it's hard to connect that one at all. And then um, Kristen Smith's body was found here, but she went missing a while ago. And there's also another homeless encampment right there. So we don't know, but these four have way higher likelihood, in my opinion. And so here's the drive out going way down. Highway 84, uh, driving through the gorge here, and at some point I have to take an exit, They're right there, so you take exit uh, 35 and you do the loop around, I'll just play it. And then up here, take a right. And that park is to the left there. But Tumult definitely isn't there, so the killer would have done this route. Yeah, so I don't know who that was earlier, but there was no, no PayPal came in. And then it shouldn't be really ridiculously far from here. So it says Tomart Road next left, I guess. So yeah, wow, I didn't realize that. I don't see anybody. <laughs> so this is Tomart Road. Hmm. So where's this culvert right here? Because it could be right here even. Yeah, so I think my original instincts right when I made that turn. So this is Tumult Road. So Tumult goes right into hmm. that highway. Now see how this is sort of like the other the place today? How you go off the, the, like so the main the road and then you head off the main road. Now you're on this dead end. See this? It's a dead end. So that's already a good spot it's for culvert this right here. And it, it turns out there's a culvert right here, and I slow down because I thought that this might be right here, even. Yeah. That's interesting. But I was looking at that, and later there's another culvert down here. So it's really big, and, you know, it's not, it wouldn't really be great for us to try to Look hide some. So this is the this is the inside of the that culvert that I don't think had anything to do with it. Yeah, so that's what it looked like. It's on that road and it's between that that highway. But they said sort of where they meet. It sounded like, and you know, so I don't think that's it. But if you look at the other spot, it looks exactly like you would think. Do I have it in here? Mm, where is that one? Mm. 
Yeah, I don't think I used a drone on that part. Oh, the drone actually crashed in there and I had to go in and get it. So I think it's right here. So this is where... The culvert. So there's the culvert where I, my initial instinct when I pulled in. Now when I go look at it, that's a perfect spot. But see how that's just, everything feels kind of similar. You're on the road and you kind of go off onto a, a place that it's either private property or something. I mean, I know that's sort of classic where you would dump somebody, but they're all around the same time. They're all really far away from where they died, you know, or where they were last seen. So you got a culvert right huh. there. So this could be the actual. Mm -hmm. Then I go down to the other side, down here, and there's, you can see through it right there. So I think that might act. And it's interesting, so you might even be on that side because it looks like there's a reason that they weeded this whole weeded area to be able to access that spot back there. Uh, don't know for sure, but that's just kind of what I'm guessing. So, anyways, that's it. So now I got one more to do, and we'll see how that that one goes. Yeah, we don't we don't know for certain. I mean, law enforcement said it wasn't, but somebody else that was in the investigation said that at least three. They think three might be related. So we'll see. Uh, the three that I've just covered that I just showed you are the ones that they said they think might be related. Now I don't know about Ashley Rial, but uh, we're gonna go out and I don't know exactly where the spot is either. I just know the block. It was like the, you know, can't, I can't even remember the number, but it was somewhere right in this area here, from here to here. So, is there even a, oh, there's a street view there. So maybe somewhere just off the side of the road here. I mean, look at, there's a, I mean, right there. I mean, that's a perfect example of what he, that person would do. There's a, broken down shed right there. Could have been right there. So that'll be the next one. And now we're gonna switch over. Do you guys have anything you want to say about that? I can just tell by going there they they feel similar. Uh, but I have no idea how they were left or anything. We don't know. We know that uh, Joanna Speaks was shot in the, or not shot, or that she had blunt force trauma, I think, to her head. She wasn't shot. Thank you, Teresa. Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Azar. I did get it just now. Yeah, so now I'm going to switch over to the other case in uh, Florida with all that we were talking about yesterday. And we'll see, because it's weird how there sort of feels like a similarity to me when I'm doing these. But, uh... 
Huh? Well, how, why do you ask a question like, why hasn't there been any more? <laughs> Who the hell knows what, what killers are doing, you know? <laughs> it's just, come on, Dan. I mean, Jesus. Why aren't the killers killing anymore? I mean, you know, they take breaks, you know? They're not just always killing every second of every day. I mean, they had one in... Uh, like even the one we're doing tonight, they think there's 11 related, but there's three months in between some of them. I mean, I, I don't know how we're supposed to answer the question either. Uh, we don't even know who the person is. I mean, if I knew that he worked at McDonald's and he was given a lot of overtime shifts, I might say, well, <laughs> guess why he wasn't killing, man? They fired a whole bunch of people at his McDonald's, but he was doing a lot of extra overtime. Then I'd have an answer. Uh, so none of us can will get to know the answer to the question. Until maybe there's an arrest made. Yeah, I know you, you always have those types of thoughts, Ozo. All right, let's see. Uh, I mean, those are, those are things that if they pop into my head, I don't even... I, 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 they, they pop in, and I just immediately go, that's not even something to consider, because we don't get to know the answer. Yeah. So we can sit there and go, hey, I wonder what color uh, what uh, color shoes he wears. Yeah, maybe he wears, uh, I think there might be black sneakers, but we don't get to know the answer. All right. So, if you remember last night, we were going over the, in Florida, the serial killer, you know, likely serial killer in Tampa. So, now we're going to go ahead and put that together. This is like 1970s, really. I think there's got to be one. They think a lot of them are connected there. So we're going, we're doing that portion of it right now, like that I said I was going to do last night when we were going to um, sort of look at each one of them individually. Mm hmm. Yeah, who knows, Diana? Who knows? Anyways, I'm going to go get a, uh, some water over here. But uh, it would be great if we could, uh, you know, get to the Golden Knight. That'd be awesome. Did a lot of work today for you guys. Drove about uh, two and a half hours. Did some videos and all that stuff. So, thank you. Yeah, except it's not. Yeah. See, here, here's what people like uh, Stoics in here thinks that, like, if, if, if the channel brought in $500, you want to see how it works? In a day, if you brought in $500, um, you know, YouTube takes 30%. So you're looking at, at that point, uh, let's see, so every $100 is $70, so it would be $350, right? Then, after taxes, there ends up being... Uh, like 290 right and then 145 or so go to the uh, the charities that I donate money to and then the other hundred and whatever's left goes to the channel is that awesome or what right so trying to make the goals more you know 
try to get up to the uh, level like that, but it's not like that at all. Today, in the, the day show was only like 200, and today on this one, we're at 89. So now we're at, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's not like what people think. They, they have these grandiose beliefs about things that don't exist. Ah, uh, yeah, I think we have that. Uh, what's going on, Chloe? Oh my god, she's like freaking out. What's going on? Blue's looking at me like, what? Can Calm her down. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let him outside. <laughs> Man, he, he was going nuts over there. Do you guys hear that? Probably. The growling, all that, it's just ridiculous. Based on that one document we were reading that had all these a list of names on it. Remember the Wilma Ida Woods? So here's hers. This is 1973, right at the end of the year. So basically 1974, right? So it says the body of a woman wearing only her shoes was found near here yesterday morning, and Pasco County Sheriff's uh, officials last night still were trying to determine. Her identity and how she died. Sheriff Lieutenant Ed Vogt said the body was discovered in a ditch near Wesley Chapel. Uh, so what's Wesley Chapel? Is that Wesley Chapel? Is that a road or? Okay. Hmm. I guess that's a, a road. Let me get my music going. Hmm. wonder why that only shows right there. I mean, it's just... Like, this doesn't say Wesley Chapel here. It says State Road... 56 and this one says Mansfield Boulevard <laughs> I mean is that is that what this is or like kind of looks like a church Maybe we'll go back and look at a map later. I'll just put one over here, though, for uh, Wilma Ida Woods.
I just said that, Shelly. Did you hear that? So, I don't know if that means right there, or... I don't know. I was thinking maybe that was the chapel. But it's interesting, it's right in the middle of the intersection. Wesley Chapel is a uh, just Pasco County, Florida. I don't even know. It's just an area, really. So we'll have to take a look at that later. West Wesley Chapel. Huh, well that this one has it over Best Western Wesley Chapel. They almost have it I think. No, that's not it. Wesley Chapel, let me type in Toyota like they have. Okay, up here further. See, all of these things, Honda, Wesley Chapel, I think it's an area, and that pin just happens to be in the middle of a highway, but it's kind of like an area here, so I guess we'll figure that out. Yeah. Um, okay, the body of a woman wearing only her shoes was found near her near here yesterday morning Dade City uh, last night we're still trying to determine her identity Sheriff Lieutenant Ed Voigt said the body was discovered in a ditch near Wesley Chapel at about 6.30 a.m. by James Childers 30 who was on his way to work at the Eckerd drug store at an Eckerd drug store after flagging an, another motorist who was sent to summon deputies, Childress remained at the site, there we go, SR-577, about a half mile north of SR-54. Okay, there's 54. And then it was 577, right? Well, I think this will be easy to determine here. Florida 577 right. there's 581 54 is right here yeah it's been a struggle today Cindy everywhere uh, let's see, the 577. Uh, it's 581. If I can get the other direction, I'll, if I can get one, the other side, let's see. 41. That's also 1977, so who knows if... Uh, it's still there. Okay, so what is this called then? Highway 581 Florida. Is that right? Okay. So now how about fi Highway 577? Yeah, see, I don't think it exists anymore. Unfortunately, the 54 is there. And it's probably one of these other named roads now, but here's 581 and 54 is right there. Yeah, 
Yeah, it could be any of these places right here. Thanks, Cindy J. Diana, Susie, and Cindy J. All right, let me let me look this up. State, Florida, um, Highway Five Seventy Seven. New name, maybe is that gonna? Pasco County Road 577. County Road 577 follows the combination of Curly and Lake Lola Roads. Okay, well, where is that? Um, Curly? Let me go to Curly Road. I think I might be able to figure this out here. Curly Road. So this is probably it right here then. And that probably runs right into 54 at some point. 54 right there. So there he is, Curly Road, runs into 54, and they said, what did they say, a half mile? Man, I'm pretty good at this. You know, I gotta be honest. That <laughs> Thanks, great car for you. So this uh, 577 is this right here. A half mile north of SR 54. Okay, here we go. So I take that. Yeah, so right around in this area. So it's not too far off, just a random pin placement. Right there. And obviously these probably weren't anywhere. None of these were there. I bet if you go back to the 90s, they're not. Yeah, look, boom. So that's 90, 99, 95, nothing. So she was just dumped on a, right off the side of the road right here in a ditch. Now it doesn't look like that. If you oh look at it, it says five seventy seven right there now. And so you know, at one point this ditch right here was way more rural looking, right? So there you go, there you go. Hey, thanks, great corn for you. And. Cindy and Diana, Susie and Cindy again. All right. All right. So we got that one. And we're just going to do this for all of them. So uh, the vote said the woman apparently had been not been dead long, but that there were no wounds on the body, which appeared severe enough to cause her death. He said, early investigation showed only a small cut under her chin. The body was taken to Bayfront Medical Center in St. Petersburg for further examination, but uh, deputies last night had not received a report from the center. The Sheriff's Department report listed the victim at about 40 years of age with brown hair and with touches of gray. There were three tattoos on each thigh, including a rose, and the name Wilma. Uh, vote said fingerprints had been sent to officials in the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department and that officers there reported they had established two possible identifications but none which was definite. Oh, by the way, I just remembered there was on the earlier show, uh, I think there was, there was a $50 what was it, a cash app or something? So we added that to it. So that was good. Forgot about that one. So, excellent. All right, here we go. And then this is another one on that one. It says, 
So the first one was when she was unidentified, and then it's Pasco Sheriff's deputies have identified the nude body of a woman found. It's always hard to find the original article, but you use things in the identification article as the hint. So, for example, in this one, it says Pasco Sheriff's deputies have identified the nude body of a woman found early Saturday in a ditch along State Road 577. So I just typed in body found State Road 577. And maybe that one didn't work, so I typed in Wesley Chapel. And then boom, and that's how I found that last one, right? So then this one is State Road 577 near Wesley Chapel in South Central Pasco County as Wilma Ida Woods, 49, Tampa, but the cause of death remains a mystery. Results of an autopsy performed Saturday at the Bayfront Medical Center in St. Petersburg were not expected to be completed until today, a spokesman for the Sheriff's Department said. The body was relatively unscarred and there were no apparent indications of violence, the Sheriff's Department said. The body, nude except for shoes, was found at about 6.30 a.m. Saturday by a passing motorist, James Childers, 30, of Dade City, manager of a Tampa drug store who, I mean, could you imagine? There's no way. Look at this. The information they give on the person who found the body. They don't even come close to telling you anybody's name today. And maybe there's good reason. I mean, look at this. James Childer, 30, of Dade City, the manager of a Tampa drug store who was on his way to work, Sheriff Lieutenant Edward. I mean, they give you every single, like, these tons of information. They, the only thing they leave out is the Social Security number. I mean, let me ask you something. When you're asking earlier, I don't know if Dan's still here, but about the, um, like when you say, why did he stop doing it? I mean, I don't know if we can come up with an answer, but I mean, what are you wondering about? I guess that's a better question I should say. What, it ma what makes it you think of something? Like, what are you thinking about with that? Do you think that, um, you know, they're, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing is I don't know how to be able to determine. But what are what's going in your, like, thought process, I guess. I guess I need to know that. Maybe that'll be something I could try to do more of instead of going, oh, I don't know, man, that's crazy. You know, what is that even? There were crazy people back then probably driving by where they live. Hmm. Huh? Man, that, that, I mean... <laughs> The chat's just dead as a doornail. I mean, just <laughs> again, man. I don't know, man. I gotta. I mean, I'm gonna have to, to switch things up. Gonna have to start dancing a jig, play clown music. Um, you know, say incredible information found in the title. Mm-hmm. Well, there could be more victims, but, nah, but you know. But uh, the way the person's been putting them, it doesn't seem like they want them hidden forever. They're almost convenient, sort of off the beaten path dump sites. But uh, he's not like trying to hide them. There. So Dan was thinking. I w uh, I was thinking if there hasn't been more bodies found, it. Is it a serial killer, even knowing the similar places they were found? Well, I think that that is exactly a, you know, like, if there's four murders and they're all sort of similar and they think they're connected, that the serial killers don't always just keep killing and killing and killing and killing until they're caught um, in, a, in a, like, a short amount of time. Sometimes they kill uh, four people and then wait six months and do three more and... Maybe one more, who knows, and, you know, wait another year, do three more then, and, you know, it's just, it's not, there's no 
a lot of times there's no pattern to it it's just is what it is they just do it when their urges want them to uh, so the rest of this one was deputies obtained mrs wood's identity late saturday with an aide from hillsborough county sheriff's deputies the identity was confirmed when officers found three tattoos on each thigh including a rose and the name wilma no current tampa street address was available but deputies delayed releasing the woman's name until relatives were notified ding, ding, ding. Um, so what do you think of that? And if they do stop, it's usually because they are incarcerated or... Yeah, but, but not normally. I mean, <laughs> sometimes they just stop because they stop for a while, right? Now, now, if they stop forever, then maybe something happened to them. But sometimes they just stop because they're just not doing it right then. You know, they're thinking through the next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, thank you. Um, so, I don't know if that's your name, but Sweet Briar, if you want a uh, notebook, you got to put the money. If you want a notebook, let me know. But you usually, you put it in the PayPal to let me know if you want one or not. I oh, like they just stop forever. Well, we don't know if the Zodiac, maybe he just totally changed his MO and they just never could tell. Yeah, but maybe he did. Maybe he did just stop forever. Don't know. So anyways, the deputies obtained Mrs. Wood's identity late Saturday with, an, with help from Hillsborough based on the tattoos. No current Tampa street address was available, but deputies delayed releasing the woman's name until... Relatives were notified. And investigation is continuing. All right, so that was uh, Wilma Ida Woods. Okay, then we're moving on to the next one. In 1975, these are ones that they weren't part of a the the dense cluster, but they put them in the same task force because they thought that they might be related. This is Diana Lynn uh, Valick. Uh, this one, again, uh, woman's nude body is found. The nude decomposed body of an unidentified young woman was found Monday lying face down in an orange grove just off of State Road 54. Another State Road 54, right? The body found by grove workers were working the area and is believed to have been there about five days. Several wounds and the back, chest, and side were found, but deputies were unable to immediately determine whether the wounds had been shot or stabbed, whether the woman had been shot or stabbed. Uh, Voigt said identification may have to be made from several pieces of inexpensive jewelry found on the body. He said several rings, including an apparent engagement and wedding ring and bracelet were found on the body and will be shown to a Tampa man who has reported his daughter missing. Vogt uh, said, no persons answering the description of a light brown haired woman have been reported missing in Pasco County. The body was found about 200 feet north of State Road. Okay, here we go. The body was found 200 feet north of State Road 54, just east of Livingston Road. Okay, Livingston Road. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess it's over here. And this is 54. All right, the body was found 200 feet north of State Road 54. Okay, let me see where it said. The body grove workers who were, so this is Livingston Road and you know let's see what it looked like here back then does it look like an orange yeah uh, I mean, 
Definitely could have been some sort of a orchard, I guess. But here's 54, and that's Livingston Road here. So it said the body was found 200 feet north of State Road 54, just east of Livingston Road. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is going to be easy here. 200 feet, let me get, well, the highway uh, at that time looks like it's down here. See that? See, there wasn't even a highway there. Let me get rid of this road shit. See, look at that. Look at that right there. Now look at it. Boom. I mean, that, what a dramatic difference that is. That is, isn't even close. This is 1999 as well. This is 1995. So this is probably where the orange orchard was. And so we got to go to the, uh, here and do the 200 feet. Okay, like 200 feet there. And then they, they said 200 feet north of State Road 54, just east of Livingston Road. So basically she's found right here. Um, and this is Diana Lynn Waller. Okay, so now there's Wilma Ida Woods there, Diana Lynn Valick right there, and let's move it back to now. She's probably right in the middle of a highway at this point. And yeah, just barely over the freeway, and you know maybe this was an orchard at some point. It's interesting that road's still there. So uh, I don't think that this one was though, right? And I guess it's kind of a dirt road. So there you go. Have the air conditioning on so it's a little louder in the background. The new decomposed body of an unidentified, so we're down here. The body was found about 200 feet north of State Road 54, just east of Livingston Road. The Pascal Pinellas medical examiner, Dr. John Chinner, was conducting an autopsy late Monday in an effort to determine uh, the case, the cause of uh, death, actually. And then this is the different uh, next day, I believe. Let's see. No, actually, no, this is... That body remained unidentified for um, almost two years. So then in 1977, on March 12th, uh, the nude badly... De and isn't that weir weird again, you guys? There's that uh, March 12th again. You know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the nude, badly decomposed body. Well, March 9th is the, the actual date that I always see all the time. But uh, I think he died, my brother. Is it March? No, it's March 13th. But anyways, it's always around the same time. The nude, badly decomposed body of a young woman found May 1975 in a land of lakes orange grove has been identified as that of Diana Lynn Valick, 18. A Tampa cocktail waitress who was reported missing nearly a month after she was believed to have been killed. The date of death was estimated as May 12, 1975, acting on an order from Sheriff John M. Short. The Pasco County Sheriff's Department reopened all unsolved murder cases in the county February 23rd. Detective Lieutenant Donald Anderson and Detective Boyd Cottle have been tentatively identif um, made the identification of Miss Valick's body within two days of Short's directive, but the identification was not confirmed 
until this week. Anderson said a routine check with the missing persons office of the Tampa Police Department turned up a report that closely matched the description of the body found face down in an orange grove off State Road 54 just east of US 41 during the early morning hours of May 19, 1975. That report filed by Mrs. Valak's mother, Mrs. Roy Sanders of Clarksburg, Virginia, was not available when detectives began checking in 1975 because it was not filed until June 4th of that year. Ms. Valak worked as a cocktail waitress at the Sportsman Lounge in Tampa and at the uh, Carrollwood Cocktail Lounge. Her last known address was, let's see, 303... 303 South Boulevard, Tampa. So look at it. She's moved way away from where she worked. Yeah, so this is... Yeah, what does that even mean? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just going to put where they were found. But... Coddle sent pictures of the jewelry found on the body to Mrs. Va well, I think I need to put where they're last known to be. I didn't get the last one, but Valak worked. Maybe make those different. Oh, hold on, let me. Thank you, TTJO. Uh, Coddle sent pictures of the jewelry found on the body to Mrs. Valak's parents in West Virginia. Her father was able to identify three pieces of jewelry that um, he said were like jewelry owned by, I don't know, three pieces of jewelry that he said were like jewelry owned by his daughter. Among the jewelry worn by Miss Valak was a plain copper ring, a turquoise bracelet, an inexpensive wedding band and engagement ring, a zodiac ring, oh, indicating that she was a cancer and a leather necklace. Further investigation provided Cottle and Anderson with the name of a dentist whose dental charts of Mrs. Valak were compared with those of files of the Pasco Pinellas Medical Examiner's Office. Based on the comparison, final identification was confirmed early last week but was withheld while last-minute details were double-checked. Detectives are unsure whether Miss Valak was killed in the Orange Grove where her body was found or killed elsewhere and dumped in the grove. South Central Pasco is the, in the past has been a popular dumping area for Tampa area murder victims, according to Short. Not as often as before, in fact, None in the last couple of years, but it was pretty busy area before. At least two other bodies on the department's unsolved list have been found in the area. One was Kenneth Urban. Okay, that's something different. Miss Valak was shot at least four times, although the medical examiner's office found 14 small caliber bullet wounds caused by bullets ricocheting inside her body. Jeez. Cottle said Miss Valak's lifestyle made tracing of her whereabouts during the final days and hours of her life, very difficult, but said it's continuing to seek leads on the identity of her killer. Ms. Valak was married to Frank Michael Valak III, but detectives have been unable to locate him to advise him of, their, of the identification of his wife's body. We certainly, uh, we certainly ahead of where we were yesterday, uh, a year ago, ahead, I think he meant to say are ahead of where we were a year ago. At least now we have a starting point. 
All right, so that was the second one. Then Enid Marie Branch in 1976 in August. Now you're getting closer to where the the clusters the cluster started up. Woman's death attributed the death of a young woman whose nude body was found badly beaten Saturday night in an isolated area of Hillsborough County uh, has been attributed to gunshot wounds. So another one with gunshot wounds. Hillsborough County Sheriff Sergeant Ron Poindexter said the preliminary report of County Medical Examiner Dr. John Fiegel indicates a woman died of a gun shot wound to her head, although one of her legs was almost severed and her face was badly mutilated. The woman's body, uh, she was described as a dark-haired white woman, approximately 21 years old, was found lying beside a dirt road on the south side of Lake Rogers. Um, we're on the third one. South side of Lake Rogers, north of Crawley Road. So where's where's Lake Rogers? How come I have that there? Or is that just popped in here? <laughs> okay. So it said. Said the uh, preliminary report, county medical examiner. Woman's body, she was described as dark hair. Um, lying beside a dirt road on the south side of Lake Rogers. North of Crawley Road. Okay, there's Crawley. But what do you mean north? Okay, so south but north of Crawley Road, so like right in here, likely. Because there's the lake, Lake Rogers, south of it. North of Crawley Road, near Odessa, near Odessa. I'll just, I'm just going to put a pin right here. This is Enid Marie Branch. So there we go, one, two, three. Ah, man, this cat, would you just... I hate, Windows 11 drives me nuts. You grab something and it opens 15 windows. It's ridiculous. All right. Um, so we had that one. You, know, you ever do that when you drag something up and it opens 15 blocks of information? Yeah, it was continued from last night. We talked about these, and I was going to go over each individual one. <sighs> no further identification has been made, said Poindexter, who added that it is still is not known if the woman was sexually abused before she was murdered. An anonymous telephone caller informed the Sheriff's Communications Center Saturday at about 8 p.m. that a woman's body could be found on the dirt road point well it's a dirt road though right so not sure is that a and this is 70 1995 does it go back yeah i don't know but this is crawley road so it was on the south side of the lake north of crawley road um crawley road is sort of a north-south road so it's hard to say north of it has a little segment here mm. I, I think we're in the right area though so it's not it doesn't matter if it's here or here in this one there are no suspects in the slang and it's probably going to keep me from sleeping at night knowing that whoever did it is still loose he said there's just not much to go on right now. Yeah. 
And it's going to be noisy here for a few minutes, you guys. So. Body found Saturday identified by officials. A young woman whose nude body was found shot to death and beaten Saturday night was identified by Hillsborough County Sheriff's officials yesterday as Enid Marie Branch, 21, of 3511 North Arlington Avenue. Thirty-five eleven North Arlington Avenue. Hmm. See, look at that. That's where Valak worked, and look at she lives right here. <laughs> That's crazy. Enid. Marie Branch. All right. This one just says, the nude body of a young woman found Saturday by Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office was identified at yesterday as Enid Marie Branch, 21, of 3511 North Arlington Avenue. Her identity was confirmed by dental records. And th that's that one. What, what about this one? Why did that... Uh, yeah, we did that one also. So there you go. That is Enid Branch. So these were all happening before, but they wanted to add those back in because just a year later, uh, you know, so th there was 73, 75, 76, and then 77 had one, two, three, four, five, six in a row, uh, like from April, July, August, September, September, October. Now, if it's the same person that did all these, then they took some breaks in there. You know, even April to July is three months, right? So uh, the, in Oregon here, we have the three from April, basically. And, you know, is there going to be somebody in July? Who knows? So the next one is Mary Jane Burke. And now we got a picture of her. The battered, half-naked body of a 19-year-old St. Petersburg woman who was described by her family uh, and Northeast area neighbors as a little slow was found, geez, her family does was found in a littered Tampa field early Monday. St. Petersburg Police have joined the investigation by Tampa Police into the death of Mary Jane Burke, a former student at Pinellas County Exceptional uh, Student Center. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Cold and Fire. I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen you in here. <laughs> Do you type much? I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think this one's, uh, these are interesting now. I, I mean, it's, uh, th I just randomly stumbled upon this, this thing. And obviously it was a case, and it's never been solved because they still say that they're connected. Thanks for all you do, Great. Well, thank you. Now, golden fire. There you go. Golden fire. Huh. I haven't seen Quietly Frozen in a while. I wonder what happened to her. Last I heard, he was reading books into... Yeah, who are you talking about? Kemper? Yeah, we're talking about... We're doing a whole different case right now, you guys. Do you mind if we kind of just kind of ponder upon this one? That'd be awesome. Yeah, so anyways, the battered, half-naked body of a 19-year-old St. Petersburg woman who was described by her family by and Northeast area neighbors as a little slow was found in a 
littered Tampa field early Monday. St. Petersburg police have joined the investigation by Tampa police into the death of Mary Jane Burke, a former student at Pinellas County Exceptional Student Center. Well, she's exceptional. Why, why do you guys call her slow? Miss Burke told her parents she was headed for a Tampa bar Sunday afternoon and left their home at 408 Hampton Avenue. What, what's funny, Zozo? I, I didn't know what the joke was. Did anybody tell a joke up there? Let's see. Last I heard, he was... Um, hmm. Yeah, Tosh has got some family stuff she's working on, I guess. All right. Uh, so it was 404... 408... Oh, oops. I put 4048. No wonder it didn't find it. So there you go. This is where she lived. Mary Jane Burke. That's where she lived. Uh, Miss Burke told her parents she was headed for a Tampa bar. Um, she lived on 408 Northeast Avenue, Northeast on foot. Neighbors said they frequently saw Miss Burke walking and hitchhiking. Shortly after 2 a.m., Miss Burke was severely beaten and strangled. Oh, you mean about the school, how she worked at the uh, the school? Like they say she's slow, but she goes to a, an exceptional student school. Yeah, I guess you guys are on delay. Yeah, yeah, I just remembered what that was about. Uh, shortly after 2 a.m., Miss Burke was severely beaten and strangled in an autopsy by Hillsborough County Medical Examiner disclosed Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of funny. But, I mean, you, guys, you know what sucks is I'll tell, say something that I think is funny, and then you guys are so far behind, like 30 seconds delay, and then I'm t reading something totally different, and then then somebody types in LOL <laughs> or l makes a funny laugh face. And I don't know how to work that. I, I, it used to be where I had a three-second delay or something. Now it's way longer. I don't, I don't get it, Dwayne. You, you get, get a better brain, Dwayne. Dwayne, why jump from Portland serial killer topic to something in Florida in the 1970s? Oh, God. There are thousands killed and missing. Why are you grouping those together? <sighs> well, Dwayne, dummy, I didn't, lo I didn't uh, lump anybody together. We were covering this yesterday, and I was going to go over each individual person in that case. I just think they, it feels has a similar vibe to it, too. You know, there's no lumping in together, you wacko. How about you go do your own channel and run it the way you want to? Okay, Rodeo Clown, thank you. God, these people. God, <laughs> I just can't deal with it. <laughs> it's it's so right up. And I'm totally lost. <laughs> oh, God. God, get a brain, maybe. Maybe that'll help you out. Man, what an embarrassment. Anyways, uh, the autopsy listed the cause of Miss Burke's death as multiple injuries. Now, what, what, is that, what does that mean? It doesn't have to be new here. I explained it perfectly at the beginning of the show. I said, hey, everybody, we're going to go over this. This case is in Oregon, and they seem sort of, uh, you know, I think these ones are connected. And we went over all of them, and we just did it already. I went to the spot. Then I said, hey, and then after that, I'm going to talk about the cases from last night when we were talking about a possible serial killer in Florida I was going to go over each individual case, okay? So that's what I'm doing right now. Man, these people are just nuts. I almost think they're just trolls, uh, you know, coming in to make comments. You know, especially when you see a, 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 
a logo or a emoji like that. But I'm not sure what that means, KK. You must be new here. Uh, what? Because it's always just random or what? I, I, don't really, I don't really get it. And by the way, um, so here's the, here's the situation, you guys. So you know how we do, when, it, when we do the members only live streams, Uh, when we do members only live streams, the wackos on social media, the, 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 the people that just keep trolling, the ex mod who's a psycho, they literally play our live streams over there even when it's members only. So, guess what that means, everybody? Hello, McFly? That means a channel member who's, you know, one of the rogue ones that probably got the free membership or paid the $199. So there's going to be, there might be a point where we're going to have to switch every, you know, if you want to stay a channel member, you'll have to flip up to a higher level. And that way, um, I don't care if those people have to pay $4.99 or $10.99 a month to watch the live streams. So what, what we do know is there are actual channel members that are trolls that are over there playing that stuff. Yeah. Hey, Dwayne, go, go do something else, okay, buddy? I, I'm not interested in you being new here or anything. You're not interesting to me. And the way you came in here right off the bat with your jackassery comment, I, I don't want you here. Go do something else, okay? Thank you. <whistles> wow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say where the heck or anything. I'm just letting you know that uh, they play the live streams and critique every word that you say and copy clips and, you know, send them out there and try to, you know, it's just, it's re they're just psycho people and they exist. <laughs> you know, that's the sad part, you know, so it doesn't even matter what you do here. Yeah. I mean, who, who goes into a chat and says, why jump from Portland serial killer topic to something in Florida in the 70s? There are thousands killed of missing. Why are you grouping these together? It seems a random. You totally lost me. Well, good. I'm glad I lost you. Go do something else. Thank you very much. For the rest of you who are paying attention, we're just going over a likely serial killer situation that happened in Florida that's reminiscent of the one in Portland. And these ones have a whole bunch of write-ups about it back then. That's it. Okay, see you later, uh, Dwayne. Go do your own bullshit somewhere else. All right, thank you very much. It wasn't random at all. We completely uh, went over it yesterday. Go, hi, I just hid you from the channel, so don't bother typing in again. It's not going to help you. Uh, go do something else, okay? Thank you. If you type in again, nobody's going to see it. Just a disruptive jackass. Okay, so here we go. The battered, half-naked body of 19-year-old St. Petersburg woman. I don't even know where I was, so I'm starting over. Who was described by her family. Okay, we already did that part. The autopsy listed the cause of Miss Burke's death as multiple injuries. Associate, um, Associate Hillsborough County Medical Examiner Peter Lardizabal said he couldn't determine whether she was strangled or died from the numerous blows to her head, neck, and face. The autopsy showed that Miss Burke had recently had sexual intercourse, but Lardizabal said she did not think she had been sexually assaulted because there were no injuries to her genital area. A red-eyed, stunned Mrs. John Burke said her daughter didn't drink, although she loved to dance at discotheques and play pool at bars she was a really good she was really good at pool she loved to play miss burke said but she didn't drink nothing but pepsis and cokes miss burke had attended nina harris exceptional student center in pinellas although the family says she's slow a vocational technical center in clearwater but recently had been seeking a job as a waitress at a cafe, a cafeteria, her mother said. Okay, where do we get to the next page? 
Oh, it just keeps going to the same one. Uh, that's 2C. 2B, huh? See Mary Jane on 2B. Okay, well, there's no, no 2B in here, so I can't get to it. So here's another one the next day. Mother relates weird calls, so who knows, man? Maybe this guy was doing some other stuff or it's somebody totally different, but let's see what this one says. Huh? I don't get it. Oh. Let's see. The 19-year-old woman whose battered body was found in a ballast point field has been getting weird and threatening phone calls every night for the past month. Her mother said yesterday, I keep asking her if she was all right, Mrs. Margaret Burke said, her eyes swollen from hours of crying and she kept telling me there was nothing to worry about god i knew i should have shouldn't have believed her mary jane burke's partially clothed body was found monday morning lying among discarded toys under a bush in a vacant lot there we go at iowa avenue avenue and dale mabry highway So she was found. Is that right? Yeah, Iowa Avenue and Dale Mabry. Okay, right there. Yeah, and also when you when you show up to a channel, look at the title of the video. It'll actually explain it to you what's going on. There we go. It's kind of it's pretty random out there, but let's see what it looked like back then. So this is 1995. So fortunately, there you go. That's 1995 in a vacant field. So. Let's just pretend it was right here or something. Uh, where were we at? There it is. The body was found by a group of junior high school students walking to school. Hillsborough County Medical Examiner Peter Larzabal said Tuesday that a preliminary examination indicated Miss Burke died of multiple head injuries. He also said evidence indicated she had sexual intercourse several hours before she died. Dr. Larzabal uh, could not be reached for comment yesterday, but a source close to the investigation said the woman died from strangulation. He said the woman also choked on the blood she swallowed after her jaw was broken in three places by her attacker. Jeez. So I wonder, that one sounds like it might not be related. It sounds more like maybe the phone calls and somebody had a personal, I don't know. The source, the source also said there were scratches on Miss Burke's chest and more than 40 cuts and bruises on her head, face, and neck. Tampa Police Homicide Captain Jerry Godwin said there are no suspects in the slaying and would not comment on a possible motive. Police have said they have questioned 15 persons about the killing. The young woman, described by her mother as mentally slow, <laughs> Jesus, kind of ma, who, who says that, was not seen after she walked barefoot out of her St. Petersburg home heading toward a Tampa bar Sunday evening. 
While police have had have not said whether they believe Miss Burke's uh, Burke struggled with her assailant, Miss Burke said she believes her daughter put up a fight. The poor thing put uh, the poor thing must have fought like a snake. She said, "What? Why on earth couldn't she have just been beaten? Why would any man have to beat a young, defenseless woman to death?" <laughs> God, who, a man. Not that, I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to be mean, but who wants a mom like this? This mom sounds like a lunatic. You know, must have fought like a snake. Well, that's kind of a weird analogy. What do you mean, like a snake? Uh, like you hold on to it and it's w uh, wiggling around. Why on earth couldn't she have just been beaten? You know, my God, just beat the hell out of her. And I mean, but you killed her. I don't know, man. <laughs> Those are weird comments to me by the mom. Miss Burke's mother, not like I'm not saying she's related to the case or something. It's just, you know, my kid's slow. Uh, she fought like a snake, like, what were you holding on and she was wiggling around or something? And then, you know, couldn't you just beat her? I, I don't know. It's just weird, right? Miss Burke's mother said her daughter went to bars to see her friends and play pool but that she didn't drink and was a good girl. She also said, though, that the teenager had her share of problems having a child when she was 17 and unmarried and once being picked up and beaten by a man driving a truck. And she said the early morning phone calls came from a man whose voice made him sound sort of crazy. Miss Burke said for at least the past month, and possibly more, she would get weird phone calls at precisely 3 in the morning. This guy always identified himself as John from MacDill, Air Force Base. He breathed heavy, and his voice made him sound strange, sort of crazy. Mrs. Burke said one of her daughter's boyfriends had lived with the Burks for the past six months, uh, months, uh, she said she said he had been a lot of help raising the child who was born to her unmarried daughter two years ago. He, Mary Jane's boyfriend, has been questioned by police, but Burke said, but I know he didn't do it. He loved her. He loved her so much, I guess probably as much as we did. We did do. We did do. All right, you guys, well, we are at the two-hour mark. If you'd like to help reach the goal tonight, that would be fantastic. Put a lot of work into these shows, especially tonight's show where I drove out of town for two hours and did uh, videotapes for one of the crime scenes. I think it's the you know drone footage and GoPro. And then also put together this whole show here as well as the early show in the day. So I'm working really hard, and that would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, and I haven't been thrown in prison tonight because I was, I've was i been so nice, you know? So All right, now we're moving on to Joe Ann Parnell. This is July 1977. So anyways, here's another one. Detectives and deputies from Pasco County Sheriff's Department worked throughout the day Monday in attempts to discover the identity of a woman, an apparent murder victim whose partly nude body was found near State Road 52 Monday morning. The body, clad in a blouse and bra, was discovered shortly after 10 a.m. by a two-county road department employees who notified the Sheriff's Department. The woman appeared to be in her early 40s and had dark brown hair. She was wearing what appeared to be a pink blouse. No, one ide no other identification information was available. Dr. John Shinner, Pasco Pinellas medical examiner, said that the woman appeared to have been dead for about 24 hours, but said she would have a better idea after performing an autopsy 
which was underway Monday at, uh, afternoon. Well, thanks, Daryl, for the gas money. Gas money. Gas money, honey. It's not your trigger bunny. Even though a trigger bunny's yummy if you cook it with honey. <laughs> there we go. Visible from the road, the woman's body was lying about 15 feet north of the highway. Well, so where is it? Uh, perform an autopsy, which was underway Monday. Visible from the road, the woman's body was lying about 15 feet north of the highway. So they're saying Highway F Road 52, State Road 52. So Highway 52, Florida Highway 52. Hey, thank you, Paulette Leonard, the legend. Okay, so that's State Road 52. So how, when they say north of 52, but it's a north-south road, it always, you know, how do you work with that? Maybe it's the side one here, though. No, that's ca oh good it is county road 52 goes sideways okay good so there we go 52 runs in here we just gotta figure out uh, where exactly on this maybe it'll show up in one of the articles so up there it said near state road 52 this one says visible from the road the woman's body was lying about 15 feet north of the highway. Detectives theorized she was probably dumped from a car and said they found tire tracks in a grassy shoulder indicating that a car had pulled off the road at that point. Interesting. So this, there's a car here in this one. I think this one just... like The reason I thought it was an interesting one to do yesterday is because it's sort of, uh, you know, could it be something similar here in Oregon, right? You know, I'm not, I'm not saying they're the same thing, but we were, I was just looking at a random cold case and stumbled upon this, and uh, sort of, none of these have been solved, apparently. And so they're still open, and it has a similar feel to it, you know, just people living in, in a town, Maybe doing drugs, maybe partying, being in the wrong, you know, sort of industries, I guess. And they all get murdered away and put away from where they live. Shinner said he found one large wound over the woman's right eye, but said he could not ascertain the cause of death until com completing the autopsy. I didn't find any evidence on first examination of strangulation, and I don't know for sure what caused the wound, Shinner said, adding that he would, um, he would reserve any further comment until completing the examination. Thank you for shining on me, Danielle. <laughs> he said it was not possible to immediately determine if the woman had been raped. Detectives found little blood at the site reinforcing their belief that the woman probably was slain elsewhere again a dump and then dumped along the roadside detective lieutenant donald anderson said a preliminary check of recently filed missing persons report in pasco revealed nothing it is not unusual for persons from neighboring counties to be murdered and dumped in rural regions of pasco county and they mentioned wilma ida woods see and, uh, and then there's a guy here, and then Diane Valick. See, boom, boom. They're already, you know, names are starting to appear here. Oh, I shouldn't say boom, 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 or we'll get another YouTuber saying boom, boom, boom. Uh, slain woman identity identified by police. A woman whose battered, partially clothed body was found in a shallow ditch. Now let's see if they give us a long SR-52 Monday morning. So they're not giving the cross street, though. 
has been identified as 40-year-old Hillsborough County woman the Tribune learned yesterday. Pasco County Sheriff John Short refused to comment on the information, but sources said the woman was identified as Joanne Parnell, address unknown. Short said in a news release that positive identification of the body had been made late Tuesday night by comparing fingerprints from the body with those on file at the Florida Department of Criminal Law Enforcement in Tallahassee. However, uh, he will not release the name of the victim until next of kin has been notified. Investigators have met with difficulty in locating next of kin of the murder victim and will continue to seek, seek them out until they are located. Sources close to the investigation told Tribune that Lieutenant Don Anderson and a team of detectives spent most of Tuesday night and yesterday morning quizzing tavern owners along U.S. 41 or Nebraska Avenue in Hillsborough County about a woman named Joanne Parnell. Let's see. Nebraska Avenue in Hillsborough County. Okay, so now look at we're going right back down into this area, see? And this is Highway 41, so probably, I bet you it's down in this area. But I'll just put like a pin somewhere down in here and call it where Joanne Parnell frequented, I guess. Down in there, probably. The victim's body was found about 10 a.m. Monday by a two-man road crew from the State Department of Transportation along SR-52 about three miles east of US-41. So good, now we got the... Okay, uh, so US... Highway 41, right there, and where does it go after that? Does it continue up? There, there's 41, 41, yeah, I just saw it, where was it? Okay, there's Highway 41. And, but I think it continues. Florida Highway 52. Okay, so let's look for 41 intersecting. There it is, right there. <coughs> About three miles east of Highway 41. So here we go. There we go, right in that area. Okay, and that one is Joe and Parnell. See, look how they're all moved away from, you know, where they would hang out, see? That's why I feel like there's some similarities, even though it's, you know, 40 years ago. It's not connected in terms of the killer, but, you know, you can sort of... Uh, Portland has uh, 82nd Street, like Southeast 82nd, and that's where drugs and everything's done. And all these women had connections to those areas in Portland. So, I mean, you know, there's no, there's no connection. That's not why I'm covering the case. It just feels, has a similar feel to it. But I'd never heard of these women before and this situation 
and I wanted to go over each one of these. So hopefully that's okay. You know, I know people, oh, oh, oh God, I wanted to just keep talking about... I mean, it's, it's weird stuff, you know. People, their brains get kind of screwed up. A preliminary autopsy revealed that the woman had died about 24 hours before the body was discovered. The victim was wearing only a bra and a pink blouse that had been pulled up around her neck, but there was no indication of sexual assault in the preliminary autopsy report. An official cause of death has not been released, but reports indicate she died from either a blow on the head from a blunt instrument or by strangulation, according to Short. A full report from the Pinellas Pasco Medical Examiner's Office is expected today. Short was not uh, was not uh, short would not comment on any aspect of the investigation. And that's that's her right there, Joanne Parnell. A search for the path of slain woman. She made the rounds of the usual West Tampa places Saturday night, stopping for a drink at the Mecca and moving on to uh, drink at and socialize at the Liberty Lounge. It was the kind of Saturday she had spent many times before during the eight to ten years she's lived in West Tampa, except that she did not survive the night. Her battered body strangled and beaten with a blunt object that caused massive brain hemorrhages, turned up Monday in a drainage ditch off State Road 52, uh, east of US 41 in Pasco County. A drainage, what did they say, a drainage ditch? Yeah. So probably just like right over, right over here somewhere, right? Law enforcement officials from the Tampa Police Department and the Pasco County Sheriff Department are attempting to reconstruct, uh, reconstruct events leading to the death of Joanne Parnell. Joanne Parnell they believe, as a result of their investigation, was a quiet person who lived a transient lifestyle in a skid row area where people drift from room to room and apartment house to apartment house in buildings that once saw better days. Investigators say she was well known to winos, barmaids, and others who live and work in the area Friends say she drank draft beer and dark port wine often. Friday night, she drank with barmaid Carolyn Jel uh, Jalif at the Mecca, where she had worked in the past as a barmaid. Although recently unemployed, Mrs. Parnell worked at the Mecca the week of July 4th, substituting for Miss Jalif. She was a very quiet person. She didn't tell tell much about herself, recalled Mr. Leaf in an interview Thursday. Last Friday night, the conversation was about their coming birthdays. Miss Parnell would have been 41 next Thursday. Mr. Leaf has a birthday on Friday. A daughter in Jacksonville is the only Florida relative about whom Miss Parnell's friends knew anything. They believe she also had relatives in Phoenix, Arizona, where she spent some time about a year ago. While living in Phoenix, she was arrested on a charge of driving while intoxicated. In Tampa, her only criminal record was an arrest in October 1972 for child desertion. The charge was later dismissed, and investigators say the arrest occurred after Miss Parnell attempted to sell or give away a child in a Tampa bar. Although known to be a heavy drinker, for many years, investigators say she never had an alcohol-connected arrest in Hillsborough County. Investigators reportedly have traced Miss Parnell's activities up until about midnight Saturday when she left the Liberty Lounge, a bar on West Kennedy about five blocks from the Mecca, 
Officials are trying to find anyone who saw her or talked with her about midnight. Friends said Miss Parnell had been living with a man named Sonny who lived in a room near the two bars. Officials reportedly have questioned the man but declined to comment when asked about him Thursday. Investigators believe she died after midnight Saturday, probably around 3 to 4 a.m. No one is sure where the death occurred. Tampa Police Captain Jerry Godwin said his department is merely assisting Pasco County in the investigation. Pasco County Sheriff Sean Short says he is not certain whether the death occurred in Pasco County. Rural South Central Pasco County has often been a dumping ground for bodies involved in Tampa slayings. Short said it may be difficult to solve the slaying since many of the people who lived and worked in the West Tampa area where Miss Parnell spent her last night were transients. See, that's, a, that's exactly the problem here in the Portland one. I keep thinking, man, who do you go talk to? And you'd have to go walking around where there are, you know, the homeless people and the People that are, you know, the sex workers, those kinds of things, and doing drugs on 82nd Street. Now, is it something I might do? I don't know. I, I, I keep thinking about it. But <laughs> Short has asked anyone who may have seen something unusual in Central Pasco area where the body was found to contact his office. All right. Well, there you go. There, there's. A map it we're mapping them all out really accurately here this is, these are the ones in you know Florida 1977 that's never been solved all right now this is a individual named sherry or let's see Cheryl Steen sherry cherry the body of 16-year-old Tampa girl who had been raped and strangled was found under a bush in a palmetto-studded field just north of Yiber City early yesterday. So let's see where Yiber City is. Okay, so that's just right here. The man whom Tampa police refused to identify was walking on a gravel path that cuts through the thick underbrush at 25th Avenue and 25th Street. Okay, here we go. 25th and 25th Avenue and 25th Street. Ooh. All right, let's just do 25th Avenue. Figure it out a different way. Okay, there's 25th Avenue, and there's 25th. Yeah, so it should be right. 25th Avenue. And then, so this would be. Okay, that's 20. They're talking about right there. So it's 15th. Twenty sixth, twenty sixth, twenty fifth. So it's like right in here. Basically, I don't know if this was here back then, but so how did they word that again? It was that cuts through the thick underbrush of Twenty Fifth Avenue and Twenty Fifth Street. So this is 25th Street, and this is 25th Avenue right there. So, you know, just like right there, I guess. Okay. And this is actually going to be... Um, Cheryl Steen O. Cherry. There we go. 
Is this interesting for you guys at all? For the ones that are staying around? Police had walked from door to door yesterday in the rundown neighborhood, which is called Jackson Heights, showing pictures of the young girl and Captain W.A. Uh, where are we at? Oh, yeah. So it says, late last night, police homicide detectives said they believe the girl was 16 years old and resident of the neighborhood in which her body was found. The detectives, however, refused to release her name. Police had walked from door to door yesterday in the rundown neighborhood, which is called Jackson Heights, showing pictures of the young girl and Captain W.A. Pass. The girl was definitely strangled and raped, said Hillsborough County Medical Examiner, Dr. Peter Lardizabal. Uh, but I won't know if she was injured in any other way until after I performed the autopsy. The body had been shoved up under a bush and the girl's white denim... Let me see what it looked like back in like 1990-something. Does it make more sense? Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, it, it sort of seems like what they're talking about. Yeah, maybe it was something like, like that. I don't know. This one wasn't, this lady though, or girl, wasn't moved out of the area though. What do you mean, Papa Q? Whoops, I was tracking from prior case. What, what do you mean? What does that even mean? I, I don't get it. The girl was definitely strangled and raped, said Hillsborough County Medical Examiner. The body had been shoved up under a bush Pask said, and the girl's white denim pant leg may have been used to strangle her. Her yellow shirt with a white border trim was pulled up and around her head, and her sandals had been thrown about 20 feet away, he said. Uh, Lardizabal said he believes the body had been lying in the undergrowth for nearly eight hours before it was found. Residents along 25th Street said they heard screams coming from the field, which is overrun with trees. I think that's the right field, though, don't you think? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about, Zozo? I'd like to know more about decomposition. What does that have to do with this? What, what do you mean? What's going on tonight, man? Is there some weird... Do you guys all take drugs? I mean, honest to God. It, it just... It's crazy. Yeah, we, we were covering the Portland one earlier, and today we're finishing off what we were talking about yesterday. They know that because of food. We've gone over. I've, I must have said this, I would say, at least a hundred times on the show. First of all, it's, you know, they can tell by sort of, you know, if you ate something and you knew when somebody ate, you can tell how it's been de digested. Also, you can tell by, you know, various, uh, you know, the states of like the chemicals in your body at a certain point in time. But they really use it for, uh, how far your food digests because your food immediately stops digesting after your death but yeah we said that a lot so. now it feels like I'm being punked mm. uh, you, you seem like you do drugs often jazz Mindy just letting you know your comment above is just whew, wow. uh, let's see I think they checked the I well, we can do that too, but it was only eight hours, Shelly Babe, so there isn't going to be maggots going around yet. So They can do that on some people. There's, there's a whole bunch of different things, especially bodies that have been there a long time. Yeah, but we're not talking about the lady in Portland, though. That's the thing. We're, doing, we're going over this one here. Mm-hmm.
Yeah. I mean, haven't we gone over decomposition a lot on the show? I don't know. I'm kind of confused. I don't come out of here much after dark, said one woman, but I know I heard kind of like a really shrill screaming something around 11.30 p.m. I know it was about that time because my television show was just coming on. Another nearby resident said uh, he heard a lot of commotion in the field directly across from the home, but said young people are always going in there and throwing a little party with their friends. Yeah, maybe she's on Rewind or something. I don't know. It's pretty heavily used by youngsters just finishing up dates, he said. But one of the screams I heard Saturday night wasn't one caused by a good time. Larzabal described the girl as being about 5 feet 5, 125 pounds, and having short black hair. The killing was similar to that of a 19-year-old Mary Jane Burke, whose partly clothed and battered body was found in a vacant field at Dale Mabry High and Iowa Avenue, April 18th. Oh, it was killing. Have we gotten to that one yet? I don't think so, but she's one of them. Oh, no, yeah, Mary Jane Burke. So it says was similar to that of 19-year-old Mary Jane Burke, whose partly clothed and battered body was found in a vacant field at Dale Mabry Highway in Iowa Avenue. Yeah, that was two cases ago. We're on... Okay. At the time, the medical examiner said Miss Burke had been sexually assaulted, strangled, and severely beaten on her face. Her blouse was pulled up around her head and she had been shoved under a bush. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, everybody. I mean, why are we talking about, like, everybody is, I'm trying to get through these cases, and we're talking about, you know, decomposition. You can just look it up. It's really simple. But right now we're going over this, and when everybody's in the chat talking about that, it's not anything related to this. You know, we, we've gone over in, in so many cases various ways that law enforcement uh, determines the time of death. It's almost startling. What case are you talking about, Stoic? You can just look up the case. What case? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The title says, Portland Serial Killer, Bridget Leanne Ramsey, Webster Crime Scene, and then 1977, Tampa Women. Okay? It's a totally different situation there. I almost feel like I'm being trolled again. You know, it's just, can I get through a case... We, we've discussed decomposition a thousand times on here. Mm-hmm. Natala says bloat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The eight hours prior, and then we get everybody, Tom, Dick, and Harry coming in. Yes, they have tons and tons of different techniques. Remember at the, um, the trial with the um, Alec Murdoch when the guy said, Oh, yeah. I tested by, like, what, he put his hand in the guy's armpits or something, <laughs> you know. I mean, there's stuff that people have used for years, you know, different things. Yeah, it starts right away, decomposition. As soon as you die, it starts happening. Yeah. No, I mean, they use way better stuff now, you know. But you can just look up and... Like, you know, you know, maybe we can do a show on it sometime, but it has nothing to do with this case here. It's just sort of, we're just kind of going over and trying to put all the pieces on the table. I've got four more to go, so I'd like to be able to continue on it. Um, at the time, the medical examiner said Miss Burke had been sexually assaulted, strangled, and severely beaten. That's the other case. All right, so we'll get rid of that one. Uh, 
every night just get thrown off. It's just unbelievable. So then she, police have identified the victim Saturday night brutal murder rape near Yiber City as 16 year old Cheryl Stein. Uh, Cheryl Stein, Tina Aurelia Cherry, I mean, the longest name in the history, of uh, Thoronado, man, I can't even read these names, Thoronada Sasa. The partially clothed body of the Cherry girl was found under some bushes early yesterday morning in a vacant lot at 25th Street and 25th Avenue. God, it's so weird because it's sort of, they turned it into some kind of a, like, park there. Captain Ed Simmons, head of the Juven Juvenile Bureau, which is conducting uh, is conducting an investigation, said finding the Slayer is going to be difficult because detectives have no leads, no suspects, and no idea <coughs> the murder was committed. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's easier to determine time of death early uh, when they find the body quick, you know, but if they find the, a body like a week later and they find a receipt that they went to McDonald's and they find, then they can determine the time of death by how digested the food is in their stomach. But if they don't have that, then, then it's a little harder the longer you get out. All right. That's the reality of it. Yeah, nobody knows the exact time of anything. Anyways, a neighborhood resident who was walking his dog early yesterday discovered the body which had been shoved up under the thick underbrush in the lot. Teenage girl raped, killed, found in a lot. Yeah, so the medical examiner said the girl had been raped and severely beaten. The body of the young girl was found stuffed under the bushes. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if this is any different here. Yeah, so she was identified as Cheryl Steen Tina Aurelia Cherry of Fana Tosasa. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we're moving on. This is the one that I originally found a long time ago. I mean, this is the one that I was looking up for doing the case on. Pasco County Sheriff officials say they have not positively identified the body a young woman found shot to death in Pasco County on Wednesday. Tom Berlinger, a sheriff spokesman, said the victim's clothing matches those worn by Gail Foster, 18 of Lutz. Ms. Foster had been missing since Monday. According to police reports, the victim was found shot through the head with a 22 caliber weapon in an orange grove near Shady Hills. So, where's Shady Hills? Another orange grove. That's kind of weird, right? Although Florida has a lot of a lot of um, orange groves, right? So somewhere around in this area. don't have the exact spot but there you go Pinellas County deputies are also working on identifying the body of another young woman found shot through the head yesterday underneath a bush by the WSUN radio tower who's that reports indicate that the second woman is between 15 and 17 that's probably the same person yeah, they were both right around the same day. It was first speculated that two murders were connected, but Tampa Police Sergeant John Fairbanks said he believes there's no connection. <laughs> really? Well, maybe there is now, right? Fairbanks also added that although the murders were similar to the shooting death of 19-year-old Mary Jane Burke and Kimberly Ann Wheeler, he believes there's no connection. Yeah, Jesus. And then right after that, they create a task force because they think they are. All right, and here is, yeah, see, here's the task force now, because this is Molly K. Newell, 
So here's another one. While the sheriff's office in Pinellas County was identifying a woman found shot to death Thursday morning in St. Petersburg, the sheriff's office on the other side of Tampa Bay was organizing a task force to investigate sex murders dating back several years. Merrill Stebbins, spokesman for the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, identified the dead woman as Molly K. Kokomo of Kokomo, uh, originally from Kokomo, Indiana, and that she had lived in Tampa since August 1975. He said she had no occupation and no permanent address. Her body was found north of Grandy Boulevard Causeway. Where is that? What's a, I don't even know that. What's a causeway? <laughs> I have no idea. So down here, there's Grandy, Grandy Boulevard, West Grandy Boulevard. Yeah, I was just looking up. Looks like it's a, a road or railway or upper point of an embankment across a lower wet place. Hmm. So, gonna, likely going to be over in this area. So, maybe it's right here, maybe? There's Grandy Boulevard. So, it's probably right here. Yeah. Google you just look it up but maybe it's right there because it looks like I mean it goes over here but that's not really going over anything then I doubt it's this thing could be right over here though I mean maybe it's right at the start of that but no I already said what it was. I looked it up. Thanks, though. While the sheriff's office, in, like it, so it says, um, Merrill Stebbins spokesman, originally from Miss Newell, was the fourth Tampa woman since July to be killed in what Hillsborough authorities think may be a pattern of sex murders. Let's see. He said. She had no occupation and no permanent address. Her body was found north of the Grand Boulevard Causeway. Yeah, so I think it's like right here. I mean, it's going over sort of a swampy area. And maybe, maybe it's even like right over here because it's, you know, maybe north of it means like right over there, something like that. Ms. Newell's body was discovered about 11 a.m. Thursday under a mangrove five to six feet above the water line by Edward and Anna Payton, who had gone to the area to fish, Dr. John Schinner, the Pinellas County Medical Examiner, said. She had been dead for approximately eight hours. <laughs> there we go again. Uh, eight hours before she was discovered and that she died from a single bullet wound to the left side of the forehead. Let me guess it was a 22. Another Tampa woman, 18-year-old Gail Foster, was discovered shot to death Wednesday night in an orange grove in south central Pasco County. Miss Foster, a former go-go dancer at Tampa God Godmother Lounge, was shot twice in the head with um and do we do do we do a Foster? 
Yeah, Gail Foster. Yeah, that's the last one. Huh. Foster, a former go-go dancer at Tampa Godmother Lounge, was shot twice in the head with a 22 caliber weapon. Miss Newell was also killed with 22. In late August 18th, 18-year-old Patricia Jones, I don't know who that one is. I don't think we have that one. Was found shot and beaten at the foot of Whedon Island Bridge before she died. Miss Jones told St. Petersburg paramedic Steve Oswald that she had been working Tampa and picked up this guy for 45 to 50 dollar trick. Police said they were going on the assumption that she was brought to the bridge by a man she met on the Dale Mabry Strip. Huh, who's this one? This one wasn't one of the ones mentioned. That one sounds like she might have met the actual killer here. Patricia... L. Jones. And that was August 1977. Might have to sneak by that one at the end. Huh. That's a little weird, don't you think? Is anybody following along here? We're still back talking about the bridge. In July, the body of 40-year-old Joanne Barnell, who also frequented the strip in Tampa, was discovered in a drainage ditch off Road 52 east of US 41. So now they're going through all the different ones. Uh, and then Eleanor Peters here. Police search opens for missing heiress so here we go a statewide alert was issued yesterday by the hillsborough county sheriff's office this is october 5th 1977 so the last ones we've done are uh let's see april mary jane burke 1977 july joanne parnell 1977 august patricia jones that's one we i just heard about we'll look that one up august 1977 Cheryl Steen Cherry, August 21st, 1977. Gail Foster, September 1977. Molly Newell, September 1977. Gail and, and Molly Newell are almost the same day, the 28th and 29th. And then we've got October, Eleanor Peters. You don't think there's something to this? Huh? <laughs> What's going on with these random comments in here tonight? Jesus, it's wild. Uh, Eleanor D. Peters, the daughter of a Chicago stock speculator and the heir of a widely known advertising firm, has not been seen since September 14th near the University of South Florida golf course where she was jogging back to the home of Joseph and Lynn Valeno at 13133 North 20, 20th Street. Let's see what that looks like. What town is this in? I don't know. It's just, it's like talking to a brick wall. Nobody's, you know, I mean, we're going through this, but nobody's commenting. I mean, we've gone over this a hundred times, you know, like, just uh, really, what a shitty night again. Whew. Wow. Uh, anyways, Miss Peters, who listed one of the addresses as Nassau, Bahamas, was staying with uh, Valenos and got a ride with Valeno at about 10.45 that morning. I picked her up at Fletcher and 20th Street, approximately 
And I asked her what she was doing. Valeno said yesterday during a telephone interview, she said she was going jogging and was going to hitchhike up to the golf course. I told her I could take her there, and I did, and I went to the bank. Valeno said Miss Peters had planned to jog back to the house with Miss Valeno, but my wife was still asleep, so she just went herself. He said he and his wife did not begin to worry about Miss Peters until I got home from work at about 6 o'clock. After all, she's 22, and we thought she might have got in contact with somebody, but we finally called the police at about 10 o'clock. Miss Peters is a senior at Vassar College, majoring in economics, Miss Valeno said. She was supposed to start back to school in January. Miss Peters, who was born in Nassau, Nassau and attended junior high and junior high school at Miami, uh, let's see, at Miami with Mrs. Valeno, came to Tampa September 10th for a short visit. Although she had other friends in Tampa, Miss Peters did not make any effort to get in touch with them. So anyway, so she's just missing at this point. And then bodies found near area where women disappeared. A body of a 22-year-old former Miami woman who disappeared September 14th while jogging near a Tampa golf course may have been found Wednesday, officials said. Police suspect the badly decomposed body found, and this is, man, I don't know how it could be badly, well, I guess she was missing for three weeks or so. University of South Florida golf course, let's see, so area just east of the University of South Florida golf course. So let's see where that is. So again, look, I mean, look how everything is just right in the same place. Right in the middle of all this. And is that the... Okay, there's the golf course just east. So in this crap over here? I mean, Jesus. Hmm. Area just east of the University of Idaho golf course is that of Eleanor Peters. Huh, that's wild. I mean, she's found in this it's right over here. Uh, tennis shoes and glasses like those worn by the missing woman were found on the body. The Hillsborough County Medical Examiner estimated that the victim was dead two weeks or more. Positive identification awaits the forwarding of Peter's dental records. The body is being put in a semi-frozen condition so an autopsy can perform, be performed today. We started at Lear School at 11211 Biscayne Boulevard at the same time and have been uh, they were best friends, said Lynn Valena. Peters had been visiting Valeno's home north of Tampa when she went out for a morning jog. Eleanor's beautiful. Let me let me go to the next one. I'll probably say what happened. Body identified as woman missing since September 14th. The medical examiner Thursday identified the decomposed body of a young woman found in a swampy preserve as that of Eleanor D. Peters, the missing daughter of Chicago financier. Hillsborough County Medical Examiner Peter Lardizabal made positive identification after comparing the 22-year-old Vassar student's dental records but said he wasn't immediately able to determine the cause of death. The hair and the clothing on the woman are consistent with that of Peters reported in the papers and police report uh, and police reports, he said. There is uh, practically a 100% match. The victim is the daughter of Ralph N. Peters, a stock and bond trader. 
So he last saw Peters when he drove her to a parking lot near the University of South Florida golf course to go jogging. The body was found Wednesday in the thick underbrush of an ecological preserve. Yeah, that's that's exactly what that is right there. How'd they find her, though? Near the golf course. Police said the body was clad in jogging shorts and a V-neck t-shirt wrapped in a white sheet with a yellow striped white sneakers placed beside the feet. Wow. That sounds like a psycho serial killer type person. Lard, Lard is a ball said a preliminary examination disclosed no wounds or evidence of foul play in examining the head, neck, and torso. I don't see anything suspicious. But he said the body was 50 to 60 percent skeletonized pointing out he couldn't be certain of anything pending completion of a full autopsy. Even though in a quick perusal of the body I didn't find anything, I'm very suspicious about the case and, well, you should be, she was wrapped in a sheet, and, and I'm certainly not ruling out foul play. Yeah, because that's what, you know what people do? I've seen these people do this before. They go jogging and they go jogging with a sheet wrapped around him and a lot of times they'll trip and fall, hit their heads, and they roll into the sheet. And amazingly, they fall out of their shoes, and the shoes are right next to their feet after they suffocate from the sheet that was around their head. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible, man. I, he said there, I mean, what an what a insightful thought there. I'm certainly not ruling out foul play, you guys. Yeah, thank you. If the body had been that of an old man or a hobo, I would be able to accept it, but not in the case of a young woman. <laughs> okay. He said there was no indication of sexual abuse. Her clothing doesn't seem to be disturbed at all. It's made to look like she just laid down and went to sleep, but I don't believe it. <laughs> Good for you, man. You are a genius. Thank you. So, you know what we might do? Maybe we'll do something where we go over decomposition, you know? Even though I'm not an expert, but you can look. I have a book, uh, this this book that's called, look at this thing. Well, you can't see it, but I mean, let me just show you this thing here. Hold on a second. It's crazy. I mean, if people are really interested in that, you know, didn't think you guys, you know, really were wanted to stop shows and talk about it, but look at this right here. Practical homicide investigation. I mean, it's like uh, this thing weighs 10 pounds easily. I mean, it's just, I mean, they have pictures in here that, you know, most people you wouldn't want to look at. But this is apparently the Bible of uh, what they all use by Vernon Geb Gebert or whatever. That book cost, I think it was like 200 bucks or something when I bought it. All right. Man, this is just, I think I'm on, this is too late for most of you guys. It, this is, man, I just got, I was had to drive so far and I came back and look, look at everything didn't work tonight. The gold didn't work. People aren't chatting. The people that were in here are just really disruptive, weird shit going on the whole night. And I don't know what to, what to say about it. You know, it almost makes it so you can't do a show later and go do the old, you know, go do a trip. All right. Um, let me see this Patricia Jones one. I wanted to look that one up. Yeah, so maybe that book has something about decomposition. I don't know. But it won't be watched, and nobody will understand it, and just be, whew, forget it. Um, August 1977, Florida. Right. Is this? Mm. 
Welcome, Kim. Our name's so common. Okay, here we go. Police say victim gave false name. A woman who was shot twice, beaten, and then dumped in an isolated area near Whedon Island Friday. So where, where's that one? This is one that wasn't m mentioned in the rest of those. So that's over here on the other side. Pool police, her name was Barbara Carter and that she was a prostitute from Tampa was identified by relatives as Patricia L. Jones, 18 of Orlando. Ms. Jones used the alias of Barbara Carter when she was arrested for soliciting in Tampa earlier this year, said police spokesman Bill Do uh, Doniel. But there is such a person as Barbara Carter in Tampa, and Ms. Jones used her name. Officials said they don't know why Ms. Jones gave a false name, but we do know that Ms. Jones and Ms. Carter knew each other. Police said Ms. Jones was found by four fishermen shortly before 6 a.m. Friday under a bush along Whedon Drive. Okay, well, now we got to put it in there. Okay, that's Whedon Drive right here. I think this one, yeah, who knows, this one might be the one that actually gave a hint. Shortly before 6 a.m. Friday, under bushes along Whedon Drive, north of a closed railroad tie bridge, leading to an undeveloped island. Okay. Wait, that, was that the spot right there? 6 a.m. Friday, under bushes along Whedon Drive, north of a closed railroad tie bridge leading to the undeveloped island. So let's go back to undeveloped island. Ridgeway Drive, Whedon, Whedon, and then it turns into a different one. So right here, Whedon, Whedon Drive, Whedon Drive. So I wonder if that was what this was. Like, and it, you know, like right there, right? <laughs> I mean, isn't that what they're saying, basically? Drive north of a closed railroad tie bridge. Well, I mean, does not what that is maybe or yeah. So this is what this used to be, a railroad tie bridge, right? Doesn't that look like what that is? How crazy is that, huh? So just north of that, and this is Weeden Drive right here. So, so that means she was found. Probably I don't know if this parking area was here, but Weeden Drive north of the closed railroad tie leading to the undeveloped island. So we'll just say she was found shortly before. I bet you she was found like right over here, like if, if that parking area was there. Patricia L. Jones. Okay, I don't know why they're not throwing her in there. I know it's on it's not on the same sort of land area over here, but she's right there. Did they ever solve it maybe? Let me let me try to do like a 
put the quotes around it. Looks like it's almost always. I'm not sure why it's not including uh, including the Jones in that highlight there. It's kind of weird. It's strange. Let me just leave it with Patricia L. No. Hmm. How come when I went like, is that gonna work? How come it's not highlighting Jones on there? going on with this? Is that like a writer? Uh, she was found in late August. Another body found in Pasco. Patricia. August on Whedon Island in St. Petersburg. Enid Marie. So now at this point they're adding her in here. Let me see if they go on to 1979. No. December. No. Thanks. Shine on you, crazy Danielle. Okay, I don't know. I don't can't see anywhere where it ended, so I don't know why they're not including her there, but uh, I would. So there you go. That's wild, isn't it? Those those are not solved. And that happened again in August of 1977. I mean, how crazy. All of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cases. Uh, three of them are before, but there's actually seven or eight. I think seven from 1977. Well, thank you, Crazy Danielle. That was a long day of, for me. Um, I don't know if you guys are still interested in doing the the airiest thing on the other show tomorrow, but, uh, you know, give it a shot. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just, I'm burnt out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you guys very much for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, didn't make it anywhere near the giving out a notebook stage, so I appreciate everybody who helped support the channel tonight and people watching, hit the like button and so forth. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Let me get to the, uh, say thanks to everybody. So thank you to Dobby Smith, Danielle, Cindy J, Allie Cake, Professor Pug, Chris Ten, Linda Howell, Kay Tribe, Cindy Lynn, Dan Keith, Shina, uh, Shine on You Crazy Danielle again, American Lady, Eugenie, Caligal 3, then Caligal 3 again, uh, Teresa, Cindy J, Diane Susie, Cindy J, Great Car, In For You, Gold in Fire, Jim Lawn, Daryl Montgomery, Paulette Leonard, Danielle, and uh, Danielle again, and we had two channel members also, Kim Christian, and there was another one, but it's not showing up in here. So thank you guys, maybe tomorrow will be a better day, who the hell knows, doesn't seem like it's possible. <laughs> it's been, you know. I've been less stressed out lately, but today isn't one of those days. I was so busy, I was hoping it would be a really good day on the channel, but it wasn't. So I guess that's what's frustrating about it. You know, you work harder and it's less. So thank you guys very much. We'll see you tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector.
Flag rejecter, I'm a certified human lie detector Gonna get ya, on a stretcher If you try and play me like an old projector Crime sector, is my nectar Professor Grey is gonna give another lecture Crime collector, freak connector And I'm always gonna be a pup protector Fool deflector, interceptor And I'm meaner than a spectre with a vector On his pector, with all respect job just remember I've a temple for conjecture I have no agenda I'm the pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work Alright everybody Good night everybody